and welcome to all of you here with us in person and those of you worshiping with us on Zoom at home. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. With Paul and Silas, we came to Philippi of Macedonia, a Roman colony. And as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city they are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered their jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up, 
and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. To the holy name of the Lord, give the praise. A reading from the Revelation to John. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let everyone who hears say, come, and let everyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and then he said, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me from before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. Here we have yet another piece of Jesus' farewell discourse from the Gospel of John. Three long chapters of impassioned words spoken in the upper room to Jesus, to his followers, the night before he died. These words spill out in a poetic tapestry of care and connection, of salvation and sacrifice and love. In the beginning of this discourse, we hear that Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. Jesus describes a deep and incomprehensible entanglement of him with them and him with God, and therefore of his followers and us and all our lives with God. And centuries later, we are still struggling exactly how to comprehend all that Jesus was telling them and us. At the beginning of this week, I took a video tour of Good Courage Farm, an agrarian ministry of the Episcopal Church outside the Twin Cities in Minnesota that was founded a few years ago by some very dear friends of mine. Their motto is that they grow good food for people and grow disciples for Christ. And thanks to the wonders of technology and a really strong Wi-Fi signal and cell phones and Zoom, they showed us this beautiful asparagus that they were going to harvest and take directly to the food bank. And the grapevines they use to make communion wine and their adorable but completely useless goats. Ask me about that at the picnic and the barn where they meet and dance, and the roofless grain silo where they pray and sing under the blue sky and the stars. Jen and Carrie, my friends, they walked us over to the woodlot to the northwest of their property. And there's a few acres of trees there, a mix. And these trees grow to shield the fields from the winter winds, and to give them wood to burn in the winter to heat their home. And hidden from our view, Carrie and Jen described spreading among the roots, between the trees, and out into the fields, this great network of mycelium, 
Sometimes we see them as mushrooms, but mostly we don't see them. This great network that connects all the plants and is interwoven with mice, uh, bacteria and other microorganisms and earthworms and pill bugs and tiny wasps and all the things that pollinate the trees. They're all connected and connecting. They're all signaling and speaking and listening. This imperceptible chorus that makes everything and that farm possible, all of that life possible. All connected and all dependent, all entangled with one another in a web of life. In today's reading from Acts, we hear two stories of entanglement. At the calling of the Spirit, Paul and his companions, Timothy and Silas and some other people, they've traveled to Macedonia, which is a province of Greece, and they have stopped for a time in the city of Philippi, which is a Roman colony there. And they are currently staying with Lydia, the trader in purple, a wealthy businesswoman who had recently become a believer and then invited them to come and stay in her home. And Paul and his companions are walking through the city, and they meet another woman. But this woman is not named in this story because she is enslaved. She was possessed by a spirit that enabled her to tell the future, and these men had enslaved her to exploit her situation to make money for themselves. And when this nameless woman encounters Paul and his companions, she begins to follow them, shouting, these men, they're slaves of the Most High God. They can show you the way to salvation. But then she does this for days on end. And what she's shouting is true, and you'd think that Paul would be grateful for the free publicity, like a, a billboard, and the help to gather people to hear his message. But instead, Paul, he gets irritated. So he turns to her, or really the spirit that's possessing her, and he orders it to depart in the name of Jesus, and it does. Suddenly, shockingly, freedom. The enslaved woman is free of the spirit that has possessed her for years that might even have caused her to be enslaved. And Paul is free of the annoying shouting, we have a beginning and an end. In Acts, this woman's story ends here. We never learn her name or what happens to her once she is no longer able to work and make money for her enslavers. We don't know if they assign her some other labor or cast her out into the streets. Even in this Bible story, she exists only as a plot device to get Paul and Silas thrown in prison. Because the people who had been exploiting her, they are furious, and they've got connections. So they go to the local authorities and they file a complaint. Notice they don't use their real reason when they ask for Paul's arrest. They don't say, these men are driving down our profits. They say, these men are disturbing the peace. They're outside agitators. They accuse them of breaking the law, which they have not. And these owners get Paul and Silas arrested, beaten, and thrown in jail without a trial or a conviction. There is nothing new under the sun. Then our story skips forward a few hours. Now it's midnight. Paul and Silas have been shackled in the deepest part of the prison in Philippi after being flogged. And I was, you know, you do that thing where you put yourself in the story, and I imagined I probably would have been curled up, probably crying and feeling sorry for myself and hoping I could get some sleep. But Paul and Silas are singing hymns and praying loud enough for all the other prisoners to hear, listening to these two people who, in the midst of their darkness and pain, are giving a voice to hope. Suddenly, there is an earthquake, 
As a lifelong Californian, I don't usually experience earthquakes as moments of freedom. For those of you who are visiting, we live with them all the time. Like me, if you are lived here long enough, you've woken in the night to the rumble of an earthquake, and your heart goes to your throat, and you count how long it lasts, and you look around to see if the lamps are swinging and if anything fell off the shelves. And then if you're like me, you immediately log on to U.S. Geological Survey, and you find out where the earthquake was and how big it was. And if you are quicker than the survey, you can enter your little report and be like, I found the earthquake, which means you're OK. That even while you were sleeping, at least for you, the world did not have to change. Everyone that night in the prison, they were right at the epicenter. The text tells us the very foundation of the prisons were shaken, and the cells spring open, and even all the shackles pop open. And in that moment, anything could have happened. Even all the prisoners, they could have just walked away. But they'd been listening to Paul and his companions, listening to their prayers and their singing, listening to hope. The jailer in that moment, the jailer had no hope. He is deep in fear and despair. He has made his livelihood by being a jailer. He has fed his family and cared for his household by being a jailer. And he had sworn to the local authorities that he would keep these men in prison. And he believes he has failed. So he draws his sword to take his own life because he is afraid of being punished in this prison. He's afraid of the system he is part of, afraid of the tools of oppression and control he has bought and learned and used for years. And he would rather die than be subject to those tools himself. He is entrapped and he is afraid. But Paul knows that this literally earth-shattering moment of freedom is not just for himself and Silas and not just for the other prisoners who are in the jail. This moment offers God's freedom to everyone in the whole system of oppression. And so he shouts to the jailer, do not harm yourself. We're all here. And the jailer rushes in and brings Paul and Silas into his own home and binds their wounds and feeds them and listens to their words. The jailer and his whole household are baptized and a new Christian community is born. Do not harm yourself. The jailer had been harming himself, along with everyone he imprisoned and everyone he employed to do this work with him and for him. His whole identity was wrapped up in a system that gave him the power to keep the peace and to make others afraid. He knew its power and he feared its power. But until that night when he heard prayer and singing in the darkness and the walls of everything he had built crumbled around him, he had not been able to even imagine another way to live. This earthquake that breaks down prison walls recalls two other moments of earth-shaking change. First, that moment in the Gospel of Matthew when Jesus breathes his last and the earth trembles, and the veil of the temple is torn in two. And the second from the Orthodox tradition, Jesus breaking down the doors of hell to trample down death and draw everyone imprisoned there back into light and life. At the temple now there is no need for sacrifice. Nothing keeps God's people from the presence of God. At the broken gates of hell, nothing keeps souls in prison, nothing keeps us from stepping into new life. These days, we feel surrounded by earthquakes. 
personal and family struggles, this never-ending pandemic, news of war, threats to reproductive freedom and the rights of our queer and trans siblings, so beloved by God. And all of this punctuated over and over by gun violence and shootings. Sometimes it seems that everything is collapsing. Who do we choose to be in these moments of trembling? Whose example do we follow over this shifting ground? Will we be like the people who enslaved that young woman who just wanted business to go on as usual? Will we react like that jailer did at first, willing to be part of a system that imprisoned others as long as he was safe? Consider for a moment what earthquakes show us, what the pandemic has shown us. They show what is fragile, what already needed repaired. They show who is vulnerable and needs protecting. They show who is imprisoned by fear and who needs to be freed. In these times when it feels like things are falling apart, we can be like Paul and Silas. In the darkness, we can remember who we are, beloved children of God. We can pray together. And we can call out to those caught up in systems that oppress and invite them into freedom. We can reject systems that rely on fear and hatred and making other people strangers. We can insist on building another way, a new way, God's way, a way that acknowledges our deep entanglement with one another, our absolute reliance on one another and on God, a world where we take up our obligations as Christians to live in ways that free others, a world where we are citizens of the kingdom, singing with hope, one with God. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me as we reaffirm our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray to our Lord, saying, To you we offer praise eternal. Alleluia. Alleluia. Ruler of all creation, for us you endured the cross and the grave, 
When we were yet sinners, you redeemed and saved us. May we sing our eternal praises everywhere we go. To you we offer praise eternal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Incarnate love, where hearts are wintry, grieving, or in pain, call forth new life by your touch. Bring forth life in the barren places of the world. To you we offer praise eternal. Hallelujah. Author of life, you are the ruler of creation. All things created on earth sing to your glory. From the death of the winter, raise the fair beauty of earth. To you we offer praise eternal. Amen. Living Savior, you hold the future. You bless and restore our families, our communities, and our world. Though they face uncertain days, we trust them to the certainty of your endless and eternal love. We pray for all who have been affected by the recent mass shootings and for those working for peace. Grant your loving protection. To you we offer praise eternal. Amen. Jesus, the health of the world, Pour out your balm on our souls and on the souls of all in pain or sorrow. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, especially Nancy Tovar and her family for the death of her brother Stan Chogren. Be the source of life for all people. To you we offer praise eternal. Hallelujah. Purify us, O Lord that we may rightly see you in the eternal light of your resurrection. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those in the military who have given their lives for freedoms we enjoy. Be with all who serve our armed forces and bless them and their families. We pray you would have us all look to you for strength, comfort, and guidance. By your victory, bring us from death to life eternal. To you we offer praise eternal. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for the victory over death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers we offer this day and grant that we who have received new life in baptism may live forever in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, remembering that God's peace knows no boundaries, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We'll have time to greet one another after the service and particularly over at the picnic, so I would invite you to be seated for a few announcements. First of all, um, there is a marvelous picnic at the park um, after the service, a picnic and concert put on by our 75th anniversary committee. Um, so please do, um, we have um, rejiggered coffee hour. There are gonna be cold beverages outside that you can grab on your way over to the park. Also on your way over after the service, I would invite you to please stop at the table outside. Um, it's spread with a green tablecloth and has on it three camels. And these are for Haley. Next Sunday is Haley's last Sunday with us. Um, Haley is um, our deacon and she um, is becoming the, the dean of the school for deacons. And so next Sunday we're going to say goodbye. Um, there is an email that will come out Monday, not Monday, because no one reads an email on a holiday, Tuesday, um, that will say the following. Um, please, um, either today or sometime this week, stop by and sign your name on one of the camels. Please, bring um, finger foods for coffee hour, remembering that Haley is gluten-free. Please, continue, con consider making a donation. Um, we are going to be giving Haley a large and generous certificate to bookshop.org. Um, the combiner of independent booksellers because she is going to be doing an enormous quantity of very formative reading um, in her new work. But also, you know, if she buys some pulpy novels, we won't hunt her down.
Um, and then um, finally, next Sunday evening, um, um, everyone, but particularly the youth um, and their families, are invited to a game night um, in the parish hall from 5 to 7 um, to say goodbye to Haley. Um, I wrote down the other announcements. Let's make sure I'm not missing any. Welcome. Welcome to everyone who is joining us online or who might be visiting from out of town. We're so glad you're here with us. And yes, um, just a second, Claire. Um, it is summer camp time. If you um, or your family are interested in the summer camps um, at the ranch, there's information at the back. Also, we have a request from the ranch. Um, they need um, a nurse or a doctor during some of the weeks. So if you are a nurse or a doctor, or you know a nurse or a doctor who might like to spend a week with their family up at the ranch, um, patching knees and hopefully nothing more than that, um, please speak to me or pick up a flyer at the back. And then Claire has an announcement. again. Um, it was last October when the 75th Jubilee Anniversary Committee, Organizing Committee, got together and seeds of manners in which to celebrate our church um, got planted and one of the major ones is of course today over at Burton Park immediately after the service. The entire community is invited. I was just over there putting up the banner with Cassie, our beautiful banner that you will all see at the end of the back of the stage. And um, there are so many people already over there who have no idea that this is going to be happening. Um, and they're all invited, obviously, to enjoy our music and uh, laughter. It's just going to be lovely. So I'm looking forward to all of you being there. And uh, we'll just be surprised at who else shows up. Uh, the whole community knows about it. It's been on the city calendar. Uh, I wanted to give a special shout out to Cassie Jenkins, who did an absolutely beautiful article in the San Carlos Living Free Magazine. And if you haven't had a chance to pick one up downtown, go online. It's just, it tells the history of the church and it talks about our outreach, all of the many things that have really been the formation of this beautiful community that you know we, we certainly call our, our uh, faith home. Um, and then you'll have chances to say you know thanks to a lot of other people who have been involved over the course of this year. But anyway, bring your picnic, bring a blanket or chairs. There are tables over there as well. And uh, bring your enthusiasm. Thanks so much. Shout out to Tassie. Reminds me that I also need to say thank you to Tassie and our admin Lisa and everyone who volunteered to make our ring toss booth last Sunday at Hometown Days um, a great success. Um, I bought something like 4,000 lollipops. I think we gave away 3,200 of them. Guess what we're giving away at Halloween? Um, <laughs> Um, and I don't know yet how much money we made, but it was really wonderful to see everyone's participation and be present to the community. And um, I got to explain to many tiny children what a pixie stick was, so that was very fun. Um, on a more serious note, um, before we have our birthday and anniversary blessings today, um, Bob has brought us um, a litany that we're going to pray together um, in response to the recent series of mass shootings. I don't know if everyone has a copy. Does anyone need a copy? All right. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. I have a few brief words before we start. In 1959, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said the following, we yearn for brotherhood and respect. No one can join hands with you to build a freer, happier, that now history will have to record that the greatest tragedy of the period of social transition was not the striding clamor of bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. His words ring loud and true for those willing to listen today. I don't have the words to express how I feel. My words seem hollow. They seem irrelevant, given the I continue to have hope, hope that the appalling silence of the good people will one day turn into a deafening war. We can't change what happened, 
However, we are the children of the light, the light of God, and God suffers with us. We should never forget that if God is there as well, we cannot. So together, let's do what religious have done for millennia and offer a lament, remembering all who have been affected by gun violence. And so please turn to the top of the page. I apologize. I'm not the best of um, desktop publishers, so um, you might find a few letters cut off. We pray in remembrance of those impacted by gun violence, both those who have been injured and those who have been killed in cities and towns across our country and close to home in Connecticut and Texas. We hold their memories dear. We treasure those lives permanently altered through injury or those taken in senseless acts of violence. And we pray that they may, might find rest and peace. May their lives continue to make a difference in our world. Together we pray. God of mercy, heal our broken hearts. We raise our prayers in remembrance of all the families and friends of the victims of gun violence in our nation, in Connecticut, and in Florida, and Texas, and many other states. Comfort those who mourn, dry the tears of those who weep, sustain those who feel diminished, and impart courage to the hearts of those who feel helpless. Together we pray. Thank 
strengthen our broken heart. We pray today for ourselves and for others in our lives who have been touched by violence. During this silent pause, I invite you to offer your names to your silently or aloud with those for whom you pray. For Buffalo. God of astonishing mercy. Amen. In hope of that love and celebration of that love and of the gift of life, I would invite anyone who has a birthday or an anniversary to come forward for a particular blessing. Yes. How many years? Mazel Tov, 26 years. Congratulations. All right, we always pray the birthday prayer by request of our Zoom community, so I'm going to begin there. For a birthday. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on all your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a blessing on anniversaries. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of committed relationship, covenant, love, making of households, building of families, and the faithful, persistent deepening of relationship with another person and with you. We ask your blessing on Anna and Nick as they head into a new year together. May they continue to give their love to each other, their family, this church, and the world. Amen. Amen. And now, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a gift to God.
please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we've rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ, given for the world you have made. 
In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at God's table. I ask that you would keep your masks on during the distribution of communion. Um, I will have um, Wheaton and gluten-free wafers here at the center, and we'll also have these two trays that have tiny compostable cups of wine. Please come forward to receive, and then once you have both elements, step aside, take your mask off, and consume. And then there are trays on either side of the church for you to put your tiny compostable cups. Those of you worshiping with us at home, I invite you to um, pray with us the prayer of spiritual communion that is in our leaflet as we together receive the presence of our Lord.
Please stand. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us your image and nourishing us spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people who are healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue to live the life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do God's will. And the blessing of God, all loving Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.